Hey guys, Sorel GarmD. So, will radiologists be replaced by AI in 2020? I don't think so, and here are my reasons why. So, if we define AI by the types of projects that are currently being pursued by researchers, we realize quickly we're talking about two forms of AI. There's narrow focus AI and generalized AI. So, generalized AI is the more popular form of AI that we see in the movies. Movies like Terminator 2 or The Matrix. This is the idea that a computer can completely simulate a human and perform all human-level, human-related tasks at superhuman levels of proficiency. Narrow-scope AI is the more common form of AI. We're really trying to teach computers to excel at limited-scope specialized tasks at levels par or better than humans. Think about the IBM robot that can beat humans in chess, or even think about this example of a calculator as a machine that can add and subtract numbers more quickly and accurately than a human. Once we give AI in radiology its appropriate scope, the narrow AI scope, we can see that it really represents the natural progression of dividing up labor-intensive repetitive visual tasks that are common in radiology and simply training a machine to help us perform them. So at its very outset, I don't think that the goal of the field of AI is necessarily to replace radiologists. So once we get past the AI buzzword, the next buzzword you're gonna read a lot about is machine learning. This is the rather difficult and involved process by which a machine, a computer, is taught to perform radiological tasks. Using computer code, you literally have to create an artificial brain, complete with a multi-layered neuronal nodal network. You then train this brain to handle various inputs and optimize a certain type of output. The fuel for this rather difficult process is data. So, Thankfully, right now, medical imaging is producing data by the truckload, thanks to the unencumbered ordering of various studies by physician and non-physician clinicians alike. Unfortunately, the raw medical imaging data is not well processed by the machines. They simply can't understand it. The data itself has to be decoded and labeled in order for the programmers to process it with their algorithms. This actually creates a pretty labor-intensive task of applying diagnostic labels to medical images. This task, unfortunately or fortunately, pretty much has to be performed by humans, radiologists. Now I'm actually gonna take a little break here and just say that if there were any point at which AI did take over radiologist jobs, we would know exactly which humans to blame. It would literally be the humans that are sitting there at home or at work labeling the images for the computers. So let's get, in the, let's get a list of these guys' names. Let's get their phone numbers and addresses. All right, I'm just playing, I'm just playing. Let's, let's keep going here. So the accuracy and quality of the labeling will affect the ground truth and a little bit more on ground truth later. So for example, the ability of a chest X-ray diagnostic algorithm to give a reasonable interpretation, this rests simply on the quality of the labeled data set of chest X-rays. So just as human diagnosis is prey to inaccuracy, bias, and misdiagnosis, so too can a human labeled data set be prone to errors. So if a radiologist is practicing in an area with a high prevalence of tuberculosis, they could create an algorithm that would be similarly biased and potentially overdiagnose tuberculosis. So basically garbage in, garbage out. So just to be complete, there is a concept of unsupervised learning. This is where you take a computer and simply feed it an excessively large amount of unlabeled data and force the computer itself to derive the important relationships. However, Currently, the output of such systems can be pretty unpredictable and probably unhelpful. The other disadvantage of this process is the creation of a so-called black box. You might have the right answer, but you have literally no idea how the computer came up with its conclusions. It can be hard and probably risky to apply such results to a live patient. So the idea of ground truth must also be discussed. In order to find answers to difficult diagnostic questions, some entity must know the correct answer and use that as a reference. So for example, if we're talking about a clinical algorithm that is meant to detect acute intracranial hemorrhage on a head CT, the ground truth could be agreement amongst a group of neuroradiologists of whether they would report a particular focus of high density on a CT scan as acute intracranial hemorrhage. However, this opens up the next level question, which is what is the significance, what is the clinical significance of reporting small amounts of intracranial hemorrhage on CT? So as CT is evolving, we're often finding these tiny foci of acute hemorrhage in otherwise normal brains. So what does this mean clinically? Does this actually require a change in management for most cases? So to get at this more important question's ground truth, it would take a little bit more digging. You'd have to review the medical records of such cases. You'd have to analyze the opinions of specialists in medicine, such as neurology and neurosurgery who followed up these patients. You'd have to track the outcomes of patients that had surgery and see if their outcomes were actually improved. So constructing a ground truth in this instance becomes much more unclear and it makes future progress difficult. 
So once we review the papers, of which there are several, we realize that AI is far from this overarching supercomputer that will soon make radiologists extinct. It's really more similar to the invention of a calculator and, its effect, and the effect that it's had on the accounting profession. This is simply a natural progression of using computers to aid us in repetitive, labor-intensive tasks that are present throughout radiology and probably really present throughout medicine in general. As these machine learning tools hit the marketplace over the next five years, I think we'll continue to get a better idea of exactly what effects these tools will have on the market for U.S. radiologists. As always, thank you guys for watching. Sarah Gondi.